manufacturing of illegal drugs in the U.S., particularly methamphetamine, has taken on epidemic proportions. These illicit operations, known as clandestine laboratories, confront responders with a new set of challenges. The operators of the labs, known as cooks, are driven by the lure of easy money and the grasp of a drug that through a new manufacturing process is twice as potent and provides a longer lasting high than cocaine. Apprehending and prosecuting clandestine lab cooks is only part of the battle. What's usually left behind is a makeshift laboratory overflowing with hazardous chemicals and contaminated equipment. And chances are that hazardous wastes generated during the cook have also been illegally dumped nearby. With only a modest investment, any methamphetamine user can become a meth cook in a matter of hours. The recipe to produce the drug can be found on the internet and most of the ingredients and lab equipment can be bought legally through commercial sources like hardware and convenience stores. Unlike the drug business of the past, there's no risky border crossings and no big upfront money. Methamphetamine is a different kind of threat. Clandestine labs can be small one or two person mom and pop operations, also known as Beavis and Butthead labs. Or in the case of many western states, highly organized mobile production facilities, usually run and financed by Mexican national drug cartels, also known as Mexican national labs. The Mexican national operation, when they come in and do an operation, uh, they do it big time. I'm talking about hundreds of pounds of methamphetamine. They do it one time there and they're out of there. It's strictly for profit. It has nothing to do with uh, use. Uh, you won't see a Mexican national that's uh, operating a uh, uh, Mexican national uh, clandestine lab using. It's strictly for profit. Clandestine labs can be found almost anywhere. The only location requirements cooks desire are privacy because of the odors, noise, and unusual hours they keep, and a reliable source of water, heat, and electricity. The small mom and pop labs we're finding anywhere and everywhere, from kitchens to bathrooms, residential neighborhoods, to hotels, motels, apartment complexes. There has recently been a trend where we are finding labs in, in uh, urban areas, in uh, uh, machine shops, in auto body shops, in uh, automotive repair shops. We're finding them in residences. Uh, so uh, really, these laboratories are everywhere. The trend of the large-scale operators, though, is to go remote. That's the reason that we find a lot of laboratories operating in farming environments. They blend well with the surrounding environment because they blend with the farm laborers that, that come in from Mexico and work the fields, uh, the agricultural fields in California. Once the cook has a location secured, it's just a matter of choosing a production technique. The most commonly used recipes call for mixing over-the-counter cold medications containing pseudoephedrine along with other ingredients in a process that can be performed at separate locations if need be in less than 24 hours. No matter what recipe they choose or how big the operation is, all clandestine labs share one trait a total disregard for safety. Risky production techniques combined with haphazard storage and illegal and unsafe disposal add up to a formula for tragedy. I, I'm more concerned for public safety when it comes to the small mom and pop labs because they are untrained, uh, quote, mad, mad scientists. They have no chemistry background. Uh, they're using chemicals that are highly volatile uh, without any training, any expertise, and they're using uh, glassware that you would uh, bake a cake in. Anything that they can apply heat to and cause a chemical reaction. Those are the ones that we're having explosions with in motels, uh, apartment buildings, and they present the most danger to the public. Many times, chemicals and equipment used to synthesize the drugs are housed at a separate location, often rental lockers, where the lack of ventilation and cramped space increase the potential for hazardous conditions. Unfortunately, young children are often victimized by parents who use and cook meth. Parents become obsessed with the drug to the point where they show no regard for their children's welfare. Kids are forced to live and play in homes contaminated with toxic chemicals. 
neighbors also become unwitting victims, usually unaware of the threat that may be right next door to them. Once a cook completes a batch of methamphetamine, at least six pounds of hazardous waste remain for every pound of processed meth. These unwanted hazardous byproducts are then indiscriminately dumped anywhere and everywhere. Don't take it lightly. These guys, <clears throat> when they cook, they put it in the sewer system, they pour it down the, the toilets, it goes into the sewer system. Uh, they pour it in the backyard, they bury it in the backyard, they'll drive along the road, toss it out of the back of their trucks. We're digging these big pits, putting all this waste in there, and eventually, if we don't find it, then it's going to seep, eventually seep down in the groundwater. The resulting contamination of structures, soils, water supplies, and air emissions, and the poisoning of crops and livestock, costs property owners and taxpayers millions of dollars in damages and cleanup costs as well as the cost to law enforcement.